I was discriminated against. And I gotta tell you, it hurts. And it wasn't because of my color or my creed or my age or my gender or anything. It's because I'm a car dealer. Now let me get this straight, I get it. Nobody likes a used car dealer. I'm a used car dealer. I'm behind the eight ball on everything. It's tough, which is part of the reason why I make this channel because I wanna show you what the behind the scenes of owning a used car dealership is really like. Not everybody's a bad guy. I try to do the right thing for the right people. I don't try to take advantage of anyone. Today, I was getting taken advantage of. I was okay with it. And then I was turned down for the sale. So that's what this story is all about. Chevy would not sell me a 22 Chevy Corvette. They have it in stock. I have a check in my wallet, in my office. I have a check for $100,000. I went out of my way to go get a check. I was told I can buy this car. Bam, declined. And the biggest part, they were really, really rude about it. That's what today's story is about. My name is Craig from Flying Wheels. Let's get going. So I have to be honest with you. Today's video, I am not gonna complain. It is probably the biggest first world problem I've ever been encompassed with. Well, this is a 2021 Chevy Corvette 2LT HRC, hard roof convertible, or is it hard top convertible? HTC, hard top convertible. This is my baby. I hand picked this car. I picked it how I wanted it. I love this car. I waited almost a year to get it and it's in my possession. So Craig, why do you want another Corvette? What's the deal? What is this story all about? Can you get to the point? This car, I love it. Like I said, I waited for it, I ordered it how I wanted it. But what I wanted was a black roof, black spoiler, and I wish I got the black wheels. Now there are two things I wanted specifically, black roof, black spoiler, two things I should have got that I didn't order, black wheels and the front lift. What is a front lift? Well, electronically, this car can actually lift its suspension to go over speed bumps, to go on high-pitched driveways, and it'll lower itself as well, all with the push of a button. It'll also memorize it according to GPS location. So say my driveway is really steep. Every time I go to my driveway, it'll remember the point because I set it, and it'll raise the suspension so I don't scrape on the driveway. Really, really cool feature. It was like $3,000. I didn't think I needed it. Well, I needed it. I scraped my front end on everything. So again, the biggest first world problems I could ever have, they're not problems. They're really cool. I mean, this car's amazing and I don't want another car. However, one of you guys, thank you so much, reached out to me and said, hey, my friend's a Chevy dealer. He just got a brand new 2022 Corvette. The buyer backed out of it. Are you interested in it? I could forward you his information. I said, yeah, I, I have, I'm, I'm interested. I want to hear about this. So he gives me the dealer's contact info. I reach out to the car dealer. Now he's the salesman, not the dealership itself. I say, hey, this guy on YouTube that I talked back and forth with, he knows I love Corvettes. He knows I wanted a red Corvette with a black spoiler, black wheels, front lift. He told me you just got one and the buyer canceled his order. Is this true? Yes, Craig, it is true. We have it. Do you want it? And I said, yeah, I actually... I'm really interested in it. What is the MSRP? Manufactured suggested retail price. It's the window sticker. The, su the suggested retail price the dealer gets from Chevy. MSRP, $89,935. I'm like, oh man, that's $10,000 more than I spent on that one right there. Do I really want to spend more than 10,000? No, I don't. But weirdly, I can sell this car for more than 10,000 than I paid for it. So it would kind of be a wash. So I don't mind spending the extra 10,000 on a better one year newer car because I'll make it up if I sell this one. Then comes the kicker. I ask, is there a markup? What is a markup? Well, we live in like the wild west right now. It is a weird, weird time where car dealers can, to be honest with you, have terrible customer service and be a bunch of a-holes. And you still have to buy because there's a limited supply, there's a limited production, you can't get your hands on cars right now. So when it's a seller's market, customer service goes out the window, nobody cares about you, that's the way it is, you want the car or you don't, that's the world we live in right now and it kind of stinks. So back in a day when you could get dealer incentives and veterans discounts and employee discount pricing on cars and even negotiate, that is no longer a thing. 
now the ball is in the court of the car dealer. Now, I don't like to take advantage of people. See this truck right here? This is a 2015 Dodge Ram. It has 130,000 miles, but it is really, really clean and it is a one owner truck. I paid a premium, like $3,000 more than I would have a year ago on this truck. Why? Because of its condition, because it's so clean. I paid more money for it because I have to. See this empty spot right here? It's because I can't find a vehicle to put in that spot. That is property, that's real estate that costs me money to put a car there. And if it's open, it's something I can't sell. Costs me money. So I'm paying more for vehicles than I ever have because they're not producing as many new cars. We've had videos about this in the past. So what that means is when the car comes into the new car stores, they can ask whatever they want. I've seen RAV4s with a $40,000 markup. I've seen F-150s and Corvettes and Denali's and Shelby's sell for more a year later after ownership. It's wild. That Corvette is worth more than I paid for it the day I bought it. But I bought it and I ordered it before like markup was really a real thing. Okay, so what happened to me today? I want this Corvette. Why? Not because I want to sell it. Is it worth more than the 89.935? Yes, it is. But that's not what this video is about. I want the car because I want the black wheels, the black spoiler, the black roof, and the front lift. That's a cool feature to me. It's worth the extra money now that I own one, that I want those features I should have ordered. Well, the dealer tells me they have a $10,000 markup. What does that mean? They're adding 10,000 additional dollars to their 89,935. So they make profit on the 89. They're also adding an additional $10,000 profit to the car. Where does that money go? It's just, it's fairy dust. It's fairy dust, it doesn't exist. It's never landed. It is no matter. It's not on the elemental chart. It it's nothing. It's $10,000 more in their pocket. So now it's $20,000 more than I spent on my car. Same car, just with black wheels, front lift, black spoiler. I swallow it and I say, you know what? I still want it. I still want the car. I want it in my collection. That's the car I want. That's the options I wish I had. I'll give you $1,000 down. I left my wallet in my car. I'll call you back with it and I'll put the deposit down. He says, okay, great. He asks me for my info and I say, you know what? Put it in my dealer name and my business name. That way I can use my dealer plates. I can use my dealer insurance. Now I'm not planning on selling this car. There have been thousands of Corvettes bought from car dealers, bought from the Chevy store, and then ran right through the auction for an instant markup. Now, I'm not for or against this. I get it, it's kind of like ticket scalping, I guess, in a way, but we're still providing that vehicle. Like, we waited in line, we just like everybody else, we didn't jump ahead of anybody, we bought the car, we paid our own money for it, you can sell it for profit. That's your right to do that if that's what you wanna do. And when somebody wasn't wise enough or maybe just didn't put their number in originally and they don't wanna wait the 12 months, they're willing to pay more money for that car to get it when it shows up, like me today, paying $10,000 more for that car because I didn't have to wait 12 months for that car to show up, right? So I have a $100,000 check in my wallet, in my office, and I'm ready to go down to the dealership in Connecticut. I'm not gonna say any names, I will tell you, it's in Terryville, Connecticut. And the reason I'm so upset isn't because they declined me, it's because the GM was so freaking rude to me. Rude, I did nothing to deserve it. I try to treat everybody with respect. This was completely disrespectful, which I'll continue in just a second. Now listen, I know somebody's gonna say it, so I'm gonna say this ahead of time. I didn't make this video to just bash a car dealer. I made it for multiple reasons. You get more bees with honey, and the way you treat people is reflective on your business. I give shout outs to businesses that treat me well all the time. Rockingham Boat near me always hooks me up when I need help with my boat. Melvin Village Marina up north took care of my boat, got it running for me. They're magicians. Uber Reflections made my Corvette look amazing. Dave, the salesman that sold me my original Corvette, and also the Chevy dealer that sold me the Corvette, unbelievable to work with. I was so pumped. I mean, there are places that do wonders and I'm happy to shout them out. I would way rather help businesses than hurt businesses. But when somebody treats you the way they treat you, I mean, it's a reflection of their business. And that's what I want to share with you. I want to share the experience. If you own a business, how to treat people. If you are the customer, how you should expect to be treated. So $10,000 markup, I'm okay with it. Come down with cash, I'm okay with it. Not everything I wanted because I love my red leather. This is black leather. I'm okay with it. Put it in my business name so I can use my dealer plates and use my dealer insurance. I don't want to have to spend $1,000 a year to register it and then additional insurance. My business will cover it, which is really, really cool. They say, oh, you're a dealer? Nah, I, I don't think we can do it. 
So I'm like, all right, you know what? Just fine. Put it in my name. You don't have to register it though. You're in Connecticut. I'm in New Hampshire. Don't worry about registering it. Just put the title in my name. That's fine. No big deal. I'll pay for the title fee. That was yesterday. I call back to give the deposit. No answer. I text the salesman. No answer. He calls me back and says, hey, Craig, listen, that's this morning. He calls me back and says, Craig, listen, I talked to Chevy. They don't want to sell it to dealers because they don't want them going to auction. So I'm like, that's fine. I'm just going to, I'm going to keep this car. I'll, I'll sell mine. I'm going to keep this one. And he says, all right, yeah, no problem. Don't worry about the deposit. Come down tomorrow. It's your car. Fast forward 15 minutes later, I get a phone call with a Connecticut phone number, a Terryville, Connecticut phone number. So I answer it and they say, Craig, this is so-and-so. I'm not going to say his name. I'm the GM of the dealer. You're not getting the car. I'm like, oh, I, I have the check for it. He goes, well, the car you didn't leave the deposit on, right? So he's like, rude right away. So I, I, I'm not going to take that. So I say, I, I'm not sure why you're being rude to me. I'm not rude to you and I didn't do anything to deserve it. But I didn't leave the deposit because the salesman told me I didn't have to. I, I gladly leave it. I called three times last night and I called this morning. He said, don't worry about it. So he said, it doesn't matter. You're not getting the car. I don't want to end it up at auction. So I said, oh no, I, I get that. You don't want me to resell it, that's fine. I mean, you're, re, you're selling it and you charged an additional $10,000. I'm okay with that, but you wouldn't let me do it even though that's not what I'm doing? Nope, we're not doing it. It's not going to auction, you can't have a car. It's my third attempt. Three tries, I'm always done. I said, well, I have a Corvette. I'm selling my Corvette. I want this one because of the options it has doesn't matter you're not getting it hung up on me now there's a way to approach things if you are polite if you treat people with respect with dignity it's a different world you get more bees with honey right so I just think like he could have just handled it better if someone had called me and said hey Craig your car dealer Chevy will not allow us to sell it to a car dealer I'm really really sorry I'd say you know what that's a bummer I really wanted this car I completely understand but this guy was a complete D. Complete D to me. I don't like swearing on YouTube. Complete D. Rude. Like I was a second rate citizen. Like I don't have $100,000 in my office written to their Chevy dealership. So didn't say goodbye. Didn't say hello. Just was short and rude and treated me like I don't deserve it. So there's a couple things here that I've gathered. Number one, be nice to people. If he had apologized and said, I'm sorry, we get another buyer that isn't a dealer, Chevy doesn't want us to sell it to dealers. All right, it is what it is, that's my bad. They don't wanna work with other dealers even though you can make $10,000 and even if that's what I was doing, it's not for, like I can't but you can, fine, whatever. So here's my advice, if you are a dealer looking to buy this stuff, don't even tell them you're a dealership. They wanted $699 dock fee. Just pay the $699, get it registered in your own name. Don't even tell them you own a car dealership. You'll end up getting your Corvette. Have I not said anything about me owning a dealership? The guy would have sold it to me, I'd have a Corvette in my possession. But because I own a car dealership, they refuse to sell it to me, whether it's for me or to resell. And I get, like I said, I get it. They don't want me reselling it. But they refused, will not sell it to car dealers. So if you have a dealer's license, a wholesale license, whatever, don't even tell them you want a Corvette like I want a Z06. I'm not even going to tell them I own a car dealership. I'm going to put the Z06 in my name. I'm going to enjoy it. Done. I'm not going to say anything about the car dealership. So don't ever mention it if you're in the market for something like this, like a Hellcat or an SRT8 Trackhawk or Trailhawk or, or a T Ram TRX, whatever. All those like special interest vehicles, if you're a car dealer, from now on, I'm not even going to mention it. I'm just going to buy it, put it in my name, and then move on. And you know what? Everything happens for a reason. Do I need to spend $100,000 in a car? Absolutely not. Are there better places I could spend it? Absolutely there is. Everything happens for a reason. I'm not sour about it. But the way I was treated from somebody I've never had any interaction with is what is bothering me so much. Poor, terrible customer service to somebody you've never met. To be rude to somebody you've never met is just completely inappropriate and uncalled for. So point of the story, it's a different world than it was a year ago. We're not buying things at MSRP right now, and if we are, you're waiting the wait. If you want it, you gotta pay to play. If you want it in advance, you gotta pay that additional markup. If it's 10 or 20 or 30 or 70 for a C8R on top of MSRP, that's up to you if you wanna pay it. The world has changed and markup is a real thing and negotiation isn't a real thing right now. 
we need to go back to old times. I, I don't mind negotiating on cars. I don't mind filling my car lot up with cars that I can sell at a reasonable price. Right now, everything I buy, I'm overpaying. But are you overpaying if that's what the market calls for? I guess you're just paying its current value. I hope this wasn't a rant. I hope you learned a little bit. Be nice to people. Don't be rude to people. Don't hang up on people. And there's a way to approach things. Whoever you are, if you watch this video, the salesman, great guy, awesome. The YouTuber that reached out to me, awesome. Thanks for thinking of me. I really appreciate it when you guys think of me and the stuff that I like. That's how I ended up with that Eagle Talon over there. One of you guys knows I love Eagle Talons. I said, hey, Craig, there's an Eagle Talon. I know where it is. Here's the location. I sent him some money. I said, thanks. Tim, I would have given you a thank you too, so I appreciate you thinking of me anyway. Guys, have a great day. I hope this was... Helpful. Just be kind to others. All right, I'll see you later. Adios.